Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Together in Business, the LinkedIn live show talking about the issues impacting the way small businesses and the millions of Australians that they employ are operating right now. I'm your host, Natalie MacDonald, joining you live from my spare room here in Sydney. Do please jump into the comments and let us know where you are joining from and what industry you're with. We love to be building our community here on Together in Business. This week, we are talking about entrepreneurship. Now, you don't have to look too far to see businesses innovating during the crisis, from distilleries producing hand sanitizer to fashion houses manufacturing face masks. And with companies like Uber, Airbnb and Canva born out of or in the years following a crisis, the race is on to see what multi-million dollar businesses the coronavirus pandemic may produce. But of course, that's not to say that it's all easy going. And of course, as we know and have been discussing over the last 12 weeks or so, we know that times are tough for small businesses and small business operators. So this week, we are going to be talking and tackling some of the issues facing SMBs and entrepreneurs. We're going to be hearing from entrepreneur Mark Boris about the landscape for small businesses and also some of the ways that you can be looking after yourself and your organization during crisis times. We're also going to be speaking with communications expert and founder of Oz Indig of the Oz Indigenous Fashion Community, Yati Widders Hunt, about how you can be communicating and building your brand during crisis times. And of course, we're speaking with a small business owner this week. We're going to be chatting with um, we're going to be chatting with the co-founder of Hungry Hungry, a hospitality tech platform, about what it looks like in the trenches to be working through the crisis at this time. If you have a question for any one of our fantastic panelists today, please do feel free to add your comments um, into the thread. We can see already we've got Mary, Graham, and Vanessa all joining us. Bo, great to have you with us again. And this season, we're doing something a little bit different. We want to give you the opportunity to be connecting with the fantastic talent that we have appearing on the show each week and to give you the opportunity to be building your community by introducing QR codes. Now, you can see it's popped up in the corner of your screen and this is how it works. Get your phone and open your camera, hover it over the QR code and it will open in your LinkedIn Ah, it will open in your LinkedIn app and give you the opportunity to follow um, each of the guests appearing on the show this week. So you can continue to receive their insights even after the show is complete. So with that in mind, I want to bring in my first guest this afternoon. Entrepreneur Mark Boris is joining us live now. Mark, a pleasure to have you on together in business this afternoon. Now, one of the things I'd love to get your take on first of all is really the entrepreneurial landscape as you see it in light of the crisis and the challenges that you've seen small businesses facing during this time? Uh, I guess the, the, the challenges are like immense. Um, the first major challenge is how do I get my revenue line to match my expense line? Um, and most industries, most industries generally, other than those disruptors or those people who have been able to pivot their businesses, most industries generally are suffering um, revenue downturn. In other words, less applications, uh, less inquiry, less engagement, less um, sales, etc. Therefore, you have to manage your costs appropriately. And of course, when you go to man manage your costs appropriately, that generally speaking means that one or two things: either you have to manage out your rent expenses, or you have to manage out and or you have to manage out your employee expenses. Um, both difficult processes um, and. You always start to think to yourself that um, um, am I running a business here which is uh, built for growth or am I just uh, sort of surviving? So I think that and that in turn then affects the proprietors, it affects our sort of our need and our want to go to work and we have mental health issues. So we have a, a whole series of problems. Now on the opposite side of our people who are doing really great jobs and pivoting, you, you just talked about some people who are showing their initiative about f face mask making. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, delivery businesses. I mean, I was talking to a guy this morning who told me that he's in the car industry and uh, he has many franchises. And one of the franchises he has is uh, delivery cars. He can't keep up with the, the delivery car franchise sales. They can't supply enough to, to, to their, uh, you know, to the buyers. So we've got opposite issues on that side. We can't find enough stock to meet our demand, which again is also extraordinarily challenging. So across the board, we have uncertainty, we have extraordinary challenges. We have um, uh, 
intellectual challenges and emotional challenges. We have people challenges and we, and, and I, I guess to some extent we have humanity challenges. So that's what I'm seeing out there at the moment. Um, all week we've been asking members to write in with um, comments and questions. This one coming through from Tanila is really about the, the future um, for the entrepreneurial landscape, asking what's your perspective on globalization? Is the local entrepreneurial mindset where firms will look to make the most impact? Saying less scale, more meaning, closer supply chain. What do you see um, SMBs and entrepreneurs focusing their efforts um, in, I guess at some point we'll see a post-COVID environment i guess look that makes sense but it depends on what industry you're in so if i look at my yellow brick road business which is financial services um where we're global and in that our borrowers are here in australia but we've our source of money still is overseas largely so most of the money you know our market is not deep enough in australia to be able to fund the na a number of um, applications that we get for home loans so my industry has not changed but then again if you're looking at a business which ordinarily uh bring stuff in from some Southeast Asian country, which right now we might be having some issues with. So all of a sudden that supply chain is cut or becomes more expensive. You gotta look at some way of actually localizing that. So it depends on the industry. But I do see globalization as we knew a pre-COVID changing to something or restructuring to something new in the future. Um, and uh, when we say local, maybe it should be global. I mean, sometimes it's global, sometimes it's gonna be local and we're gonna have to make changes on the run. So I don't know if there's a set formula. Um, let's wait to see how it all settles down because you know, in 12 months time, it might well be under control for, for whatever the reason is. That is the vac uh, through vaccines, it could be the COVID crisis is under control. And we just go back to where we were pre-COVID. In other words, we start importing our stuff from wherever it is we're importing it for from and then putting that into our supply chain. So I wouldn't get too carried away with starting to build a local and generally speaking more expensive supply chain just because we think the structure has changed for the future. Now, we've had quite a number of comments um, today and earlier regarding the government approach uh, when it comes to startups. Um, Mike has just written in, if the government could do one thing to make um, Australian IT technology a global leader, what would it be? There are a lot of comments pointing to bureaucracy and regulation as roadblocks. Is there more support to be had from government when it comes to startups and, and small businesses more broadly? Tax incentives, number one. Everybody overlooks administration issues and red tape, so to speak, um, and uh, bureaucracy if they pay less tax. At the end of the day, you know, we carry on about all these things. So the reason we talk about uh, red tape right now is because we make the assumption that there's not going to be tax relief. If you look at the countries that are doing the best when it comes to IT and, and or more importantly, technology or technological progress in relation to the country, that particular country, you're going to find that you're going to get, you have very good tax regimes, Singapore, Israel, uh, the uh, Emirates areas, uh, Ireland, the the, the um, global financial the financial centre in Ireland, which is the tax rate is only ten percent. All the great technology um, initiatives coming out of places other than the United States, um, which is the you know the hotbed of technology. But other than that, and Australia is one of those. Other than the way the government could entice better technology outcomes from as homegrown in Australia would be to build tax incentives for that particular industry segment. And to be frank with you, once you do that and we have people homing themselves here in Australia, whether it is in Sydney or Canberra or some special place that the government designates, like they have done in Ireland, then fund, funds will start to be attracted. So all of a sudden we'll be able to raise money more readily too for those technology organisations, which another reason why our technology organisations leave Australia is to, is to raise money. So if we can have them seated here, homed here, at lower tax rates, then the funding will follow. And I just think that could be the greatest outcome for Australia that exists today, if the government decided technology was an important thing to keep at home. Mm, of course, and the government, as we know, is quite a lot on its plate at the moment, but certainly that idea of tax incentives definitely seems to be something that would be supportive of that community. Now, we know this has been a really tough time for small businesses. We know this has been a really tough time for professionals. And we've got a large number of the professional community that have been made redundant during this time and are thinking, what next? What can they do? Um, Anthony has asked, what is your advice to someone who has been made redundant to future proof their employment? Do they need to pursue the entrepreneurial route to ensure that they can control their own destiny? Really interested to get your take on this one. Well, the answer to that is 
um, if you have an idea that you have this and that you have a skill that actually can turn it into turn this entrepreneurial idea into a business model of some type, the answer to that is yes. But what I would suggest is if you're being made redundant, um, then you go and you have this great idea. I wouldn't throw myself headlong into the idea. What I would do is I would go and take any job. This would be me. I would go and take any job just to pay, have some money coming in. Wouldn't matter what it was, and I would be working on my entrepreneurial idea at night. So uh, let's call it a, a side hustle. But in this case, this is become the, going to become the real hustle. You've got to have cash flow. I don't care what you, what anybody says. You must have cash flow, and the, you know you've got to try and get that cash flow over and above the you know job keeper and job seeker, etc. So there's no point sort of putting yourself on the CES line or the you know the the um, the, the dole line because um, that's not going to help you out in any event. And by the way, you need. You need to have some sort of um, energy to be an entrepreneur, and and you don't have energy if you're under pressure, um, and 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 you also need to have have imagination if you want to be an entrepreneur, and you don't have any ab imagination as an entrepreneur if you have fear, and fear gets um, certainly knocks on your door in the middle of the night if you can't afford to pay your rent. So put yourself in a position where you can sustain your lifestyle. One, that is in a revenue sense. It doesn't matter what the job is. Become a courier. Find something that's, that's growing. You don't even need to have a skill to be a courier. I mean, I don't say that in a demeaning way. If you can drive a car and you can pick up a package, you can be on time, you can read an organisation sheet and a schedule, you can become a courier, right? Become a courier somewhere. And at least that's going to bring some money home. And the moment you get a spare minute and you spend every spare minute, it doesn't matter if you have to work to midnight, work on your entrepreneurial idea, but make sure the idea is something that you can turn into a business. So turn it into a business model. Do your research. Build up your, um, you know, your P and L, what it needs to look like. Work out what resources you need to get, both in terms of capital and human resources, and and then work out how you can deliver this product to wherever you're going to deliver it to. But just build that on the side. Nothing wrong with doing business on the side. Anthony, I hope that advice was helpful to you. We've had a really thoughtful comment come through from Kathy, who says that being consistent and having grit is integral, saying we need compassion, empathy, and open communication to succeed, staying optimistic and being grateful while focusing on others. What advice, Mark, do you have for founders who are perhaps burnt out? They've been months on end having to make these decisions to keep their head above water, um, who are facing tough times during the crisis. I mean, how, how do you stay motivated? Um, well, it's not necessarily how I stay motivated, but, um, well, if you live in Sydney and any of the equivalent cities in this country, and if, or if you live in a country or a regional area, but find the equivalent, get up at about, uh, I don't know, 11 o'clock tonight or any night of the week and walk down to Woolloomooloo and go around, walk around there and have a look at all the people sleeping on mattresses in the pouring rain and the freezing cold, and they're all sleeping um, rough with a whole lot of other people sleeping rough. And uh, have a just stand there and think about it for a second about um, um, how they've lost their sense of identity, their sense of purpose, and then remember what your sense of identity is and what your sense of purpose is. In other words, why are you in the particular business? Which, by the way, is going to burn, is burning you out. And think about which one you'd rather do. And you'll quickly realise that uh, you're in a far better position than somebody else. So burnout is a relative thing. Um, feeling tired is a relative thing relative to how good you're going because of being tired. Go and have a look at how somebody else is going. And then they, these people are probably sleeping all day. Um, and uh, and that because they can't they can't sleep at night, got to lay there with one eye open because they might be going to get robbed or mugged or something, or just they're just bloody freezing. So it's relative. If you feel burnout, stop whinging about it. Go and have a look at someone who is actually, actually morally and uh, emotionally ruined as opposed to burn it and they feel as though they've got absolutely no hope then come back and have a look at what you're doing and think to yourself wow how lucky am i i'm going to start again then maybe just try and get a few good not a few good nights sleep as well i think that advice really resonating um jared saying honest true boo business advice as always thank you mark certainly appreciate you taking the time to join us um this afternoon on together in business and share some of your advice we do have the qr code up on the screen so members are able to use that to follow you and get more of your learnings um, and of course any questions that we're unable to get to you can of course um at mention mark in the comments thank you again for taking the time to join us this afternoon keep australia strong that's what we've got to do keep us Australia strong. That's a great point to leave it. Thank you again, Mark. Keep Australia strong.